there, I'm Katie for Rusticate, and today I'm going to showing you how to make a tatted snowflake. So I was just writing the pattern for my tatted snowflake, and this is what we're going to be working on today. So let me put my pen away, get my tatting supplies out, and we'll get started. And the finished pattern for this will be available on my website at rusticate.com. It should be in text below the video that will be on the webpage, and then I'll also try and include a downloadable PDF. Okay, we're ready to start our project. So I'm using a size 5 needle, size 10 thread. You can really adjust this to any size you want as long as you keep it balanced between the proper gauge needle and thread size. And but this is a good standard one for me to do on here. You'll be able to see the details well. And I like to use this size quite often. So you can see my needle's a little bent. It's not supposed to be that way. I have too much pressure when I push on the needle. So your needle should be straight unless you also push too hard and then you'll also see a curve. Okay, we are ready to get started. I have gone ahead and threaded my needle. We're gonna do the 12 inches of thread for our needle roughly and then down two feet roughly towards the ball thread before we start our first stitch. Now the first stitch, we're gonna be doing one of the small rings. We're gonna do three double stitches. one pico and three more double stitches and if any point this video is moving too fast you can go into the settings on your YouTube video player it looks like a gear on your computer or look like three little dots on your phone and you can adjust the viewing speed so you can actually speed it up or slow it down if you need it faster or slower and that's for the video speed alright so now we're ready we've finished our stitches for our first ring we're gonna close our work Pull the thread right out. We want to make sure and put it through the tail thread before it slides completely tight. All right, and pull that together. Make a knot at the top. Right like that. And then we're going to reverse our work, which just simply means you're going to flip it over. And then we're going to start our chain. The chain's going to be the same count. We're just going to be doing it in a chain instead of a ring this time. So three double stitches. One pico, three double stitches, and then we're going to slide that off of our needle onto that core thread. And again, because it's a chain, we don't need to do anything else except for slide it off. Make sure it doesn't get tangled. All right. So there we go. We've got our first ring and our first chain. A lot of the times I'll actually tie a knot after each step, but on this one, I'm only going to be tying a knot after the ring like that. And I'm going to reverse my work, start my next ring. So three double stitches again. And then this time we're going to join to this previous pico. And I like to just use the tip of the needle. You can also use a crochet hook. You can see as the light's changing, I'm starting to get a pretty big shadow here. If I lose the light too much, I'll, I'll stop and put up some more lights. All right, so here we go. Three, join, and then three more double stitches. All right, like that. So we've got a total of six and one join. Now we're ready to close our work. like that and tie a knot. I'm going to pause it right here and get some more lights so I can get rid of the shadows and then we'll go from there. Now in this part we're not going to reverse our work. We're actually just going to leave it as it is and we're going to start our next chain. This is going to be a long chain. It's going to be five double stitches. One pico, five double stitches. I think oftentimes snowflake patterns can be difficult because they will have you use reversing work and not reversing work. 
kind of intermittently to create the pattern that you're making, and that can be really confusing. All right, so we've got five and four, so let me do one more. All right, now I'm ready to slide my work off my needle. So again, for this one, we did not reverse our work, and this is actually a good example to show you how it makes a difference. So in this one, we reversed our work, and that made the chain go this direction with the pico going up. This one, because we did not reverse our work, the chain starts to curve this way, and the pico goes off to the side. All right, so now I am going to reverse my work, and I'm going to make a ring. The ring is going to be the same count as the chain was, but in ring form, so five double stitches. One pico, five double stitches. Okay, and then we're going to close our ring. Tie a knot. Okay, and then we're going to make another ring. So we're going to make three rings right next to each other, so in succession. Same count, five double stitches, one pico, five double stitches. Here's our pico. Whoop, curl that one around. Okay. Get it back to the way it's supposed to be. So five double stitches. We've got pico, two more, so I need three more double stitches. Close our work. And again, we're not reversing our work between rings. We're leaving it the same. When we go in the same direction with these rings. Tie a knot. Alright, we're going to make one more ring. Same count. Five double stitches. Pico, five more double stitches. All right, so we're ready to close the string. like that. So you should have, at this point, two small rings with a small chain, one large chain, and then three of the larger rings right next to each other, making almost kind of a clover, right like that. And I tied a knot on each one of the rings. Then we're going to reverse our work and make the second large chain. So same number of stitches on this one, five double stitches. And then after you have five double stitches, then you're going to join to that previous pico of the previous chain, the large chain. And you can use a crochet hook when you do this, or you can use the tip of the needle, like I do, whichever works best for you, whatever you're comfortable with. Then you're going to make five more double stitches. and then slide your work off the needle. Right like that. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start right here again and continue on. So I'm gonna repeat these steps. Next I'm going to do a ring, a small chain, a ring, and then repeat large chain, ring, 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 and then large chain. 
So I'm going to keep repeating this until I actually have a total of five of these and five of these made. So let me make another example and you can follow along one more time. At this point, I'm not going to reverse my work when I make the next ring. I'm just going to start right here. For this ring, I'm going to do the three double stitches. And then we're going to do one pico and then three more double stitches. And then we're going to close this ring. After we make a knot, then we're going to reverse our work and make our chain. For the chain, we're going to do the three double stitches, one pico, three more double stitches, and then slide our work off of our needle. After our work is off of our needle, we're going to reverse our work and then start our next ring. So for this ring, we're going to start out with three double stitches and then we're going to join to that free pico of the last ring. three more double stitches and then close our ring. I'm going to tie a knot. After this last ring, then we don't reverse our work. We stay just like we started that ring and then we're going to do our next chain. So five double stitches, we're going to do the big chain again. Pico, five double stitches. Slide the work off of our needle. And then we're going to reverse our work at that point and make our large ring. So five double stitches. Two three, four, and five. One pico, and then we're gonna do the five more double stitches to finish that ring. Then we're gonna close our ring. knot and then make our next ring and then again for all three of these rings in a row we don't reverse our work we just make one right after another and this one is also five stitches so five double stitches pico and then five more double stitches Then we're going to close our ring and make a knot. Now we're ready to start our third ring. Same number of stitches, five double stitches. And then one pico 
and then five more double stitches. At this point, we're ready to close our work. And make a knot. Now I'm ready to reverse my work and make my next chain. Now I, I do like to, I, I don't know if I showed this step last time, but I do like to do my special step. So I have a link to my special step below this video and on the video. But I put the needle through the base or the top of that previous chain before I make the next one. It just pulls it together and makes it a little easier to keep it from twisting. All right, so now I'm going to start my next chain. Five double stitches. And then I'm going to join to that free pico of that last large chain. And then the five more double stitches. And then you're ready to slide your work off your needle. Right like that. All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and make our set of two rings again, which is going to be a repeat of this here. So we're just going to keep repeating this pattern. So we're going to have five sets of these and five sets of these larger, like clover like rings. I'm going to go ahead and do my stitches up to that point, and then I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like after it's all done. All right, so at this point, we have five of the two small ring clusters and five of the kind of clover clusters made. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I didn't do the final chain. So the final chain, the final step that we're going to make is going to be one more long chain. So we're going to do five double stitches. Then we're going to join to that last pico of that previous chain made. Right like that, and then five more double stitches. And slide our work off the needle. Right like that. And then at this point, we're going to kind of unwind and get everything organized. And you can even set it down on the table if that helps. Um, it really does sometimes once your projects get to this size and kind of looped around. So we're going to get it oriented right. You want to make sure you do that before you make that final closure. All right, almost got it. Okay. So that's roughly the way it's supposed to be. So I'm going to come over, I'm going to make a knot at the top of that chain, and then I'm going to simply insert the needle through the top of this ring, the base of this chain, and then knot it a couple of times. After that, I'll hide my thread ends and cut my thread, and then I'll be all done, and I'm just going to iron after that. So here we go. This is where it's important to make sure you're oriented the right way though, because you don't want to tie it together at the end and have everything twisted. You want to make sure everything's going the right direction, the same direction. All right, now we're going to make a knot. I'm going to put the needle back through one more time. 
and make another knot. I just want this to be a really secure fastening of those threads together. All right, at this point, it's all connected, so I'm going to hide my thread ends, cut my thread, and then I'll show you what the final object looks like when I'm all done. So after you're all done, tie those threads all together, you hid your thread ends, you cut your threads, and then ironed it, it should look like this. Now I have not spray starched this at all. You would want to stiffen it with something before you actually use it as a hanging ornament so it'll maintain its shape well while it's on your tree or hanging on your garland. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did make sure and subscribe if you haven't already and when you do make sure and hit that notification bell so you get notified of all new content. Please leave a like, comment below, all those things. They really help and really encourage me to keep making videos. I look forward to seeing you again next time and I hope you really, really enjoy this project and making and sharing these snowflakes.